hi guys so sorry for not being regular with the videos and the reason for that is i have been shifting and uh, i have not yet found a permanent resident residence so hopefully in a week i'll find one and then i'll get back to making regular videos now since many of you were asking me about how to prepare for csir net you know what topics to do and how to like go about it so i'll be discussing that today now the most important thing to crack csir net exam is in organic chemistry okay so first of all without thinking anything you need to focus on in organic chemistry this is the make or break if you know this if you can do this topic well you are definitely uh, on the way to crack csir net and getting a good rank in fact not just clearing it but getting it clearing it with a good rank okay so this is the most important part in organic chemistry and uh, <clears throat> the reason for that is that it is one of the easiest portions and there is limited syllabus and when the question comes in the exam you either know it or you don't know it you cannot try it okay and because of it what, what because of this what happens is that you are able to there is no negative marks in the, in this particular topic okay so whatever your strong point is be it physical or organic that sh that you should do but along with that you should be doing in organic chemistry for sure okay and there are two books that i recommend one of, one of them is hui okay and the other one is crabtree now hui you can go ahead and buy but crabtree it's a bit, bit expensive it's around 5000 rupees so you can download this uh, the pdf file of crabtree it is available online okay and read it from there basically from crabtree organometallics is the part which is very important okay okay now let's talk uh, let's talk about the topics that are important so the first topic that you need to be doing is coordination coordination compounds okay coordination compounds and uh, the most uh, important uh, i'll discuss the sub topics so the first is jan teller distortion jan teller distortion now this exam is at masters level so you just it's not just enough to know what is jan teller distortion you should know when does compression take place okay when does expansion take place okay so you should know when is compression taking place in a jantler distortion when is expansion taking place in jantler distortion that is very important so sometimes the question comes sometimes the question can come on jantler distortion when whether it's compression or expansion okay so you need to know that as well then the second is lmct and mlct transitions this is very important this this question comes in almost all the papers so you you need to know what is lmct mlct transitions when does what take place and why does it take place okay then is inner and outer sphere mechanism this also this all this question also comes uh, frequently but not as frequently as lmct and mlct but you need to know because it generally comes in alternate papers right one question uh, from here and there comes from inner and out outer sphere mechanism so you should know that okay then you should also know oracle diagrams in oracle diagrams what is important is you should know what transitions are uh, you know favorable which are not favorable when will which take place so basically you need to know the selection rules and also know the ground state energies of various uh, uh, you know um, uh, transition metals like for a d5 configuration which is a ground state for d6 for d7 both octahedral and tetrahedral there are four or five diagrams and they are pretty easy so you should know oracle diagram and generally a question comes from oracle diagram and if you have time then you go for tanabe sunago diagram tanabe sunago diagram now this is not as important and i would not rate it very important because oracle diagrams is still easier to mug up but the navi sunogarno diagrams is quite difficult to mug up and there are a lot of uh, there is different ground state for each and every tanabe sugano diagram right so i would suggest you to do only the d5 configuration of tanabe sugano diagram like it came this year in june 2017 but avoid it and if you if you have time only then go for the nabe sugano diagrams okay otherwise just do the d5 configuration okay so now moving on to the next topic uh, in coordination yeah 
color color is very important color of coordination compounds i have actually done a video on this topic and i think that is sufficient for you to uh, you know for this particular uh, sub topic so you can go watch that video it is about 10 or 12 minutes long and it tells you all about the color in coordination compounds okay uh, okay so the next thing is you should be able to calculate the crystal field stabilization energy cfsc okay and you should also know how to calculate the pairing energy this is also very important so pairing energy and crystal crystal field stabilization energy and uh, then one more topic you can say which is important is uh, then you should know the spectrochemical series you know which ligand is a strong field ligand which is a weak field ligand that is very important uh, because sometimes sometimes what happens in the exam a very easy question comes but you haven't heard of the ligand and so you cannot predict whether it's a strong field or a weak field ligand so you should know the spectrochemical series very well okay even of uh, you know compounds which are uh, quite even of ligands which are quite scarce which do not come which which you will come across uh, rarely so you should even know the spectrochemical series and the uh, strength of the ligand for rare ligands as well okay okay and then there is uh, 80 okay no, that is from another topic and then you should know trans effect this is very important every alternate year a question comes from trans effect as well so you should know the trans effect so this was all about coordination compounds so these are the topics that you should know from coordination compounds okay I have another very important topic and that is organometallics the bulk of the inorganic paper is made from organometallics it not it the question may not come directly from organometallics you know so 12 16 marks is a direct questions from organometallics and then there are almost 20 marks questions which are indirectly coming from an organic portion in organometallics so this is a very very important uh, topic uh, topic and you should do it from crab 3 okay so there are one simple subtopics you should know all the mechanisms that is oxidative addition okay oxidative addition you should know about then there is a migratory insertion okay you have migratory insertion in oxidative addition you should know of for both non-polar and polar okay what happens in if you if you do oxidative addition in polar compounds and what happens in non-polar compounds now the reason for that is in non-polar there is always cis addition that is taking place like if you use h2 h2 always gives cis addition product but for polar compounds there is a difference and that this, this very question came this year as well they had given us methyl iodide ch3i right and this is a polar so most of the people i uh, most of the students did cis addition but you should know the exceptions as well for, so for polar uh, polar uh, compounds their oxidative addition is not it cannot be cis okay then we have migratory insertion then uh, then there is uh, what else beta hydride elimination this is very important you should know definitely do this very well beta hydride elim elimination okay and in this you know there are questions asked on stability like for example there will be four compounds given uh, in one of them there will be only four, uh, one beta hydride in second compound there will be no beta hydride and in the third compound there will be four beta hydrides so they will ask the thermal stability so then you can say that the one with the most beta hydrides will be unstable and will undergo uh, it will decompose uh, on addition on uh, application of heat and the one with no beta hydride uh, beta hydride pre present will be the most stable so okay so questions like these can come so questions can also come on uh, you know application of these mechanisms so you should definitely do these mechanisms and one other mechanism is uh, orthometallation this is not as this does not come as frequently as rest of the uh, you know three mechanisms but yet this is important you know some it might come this year okay so or orthometallation is one uh, important mechanism then in organometallics we have the basic 18 electron rule that you should know simple question definitely comes for two marks okay then there is a uh, uh, we can say in organometallics you should know all the processes the industrial processes like there is monsanto uh, acetic acid process okay monsanto acetic acid process 
then there is cativa process okay and what else vacuous process so these are various uh, industrial industrially important reactions that you should know about and you should know the active catalyst that is uh, you know uh, that is being used in the reactions you should know the whole cycle so if you go for a good book you there will be a catalytic cycle given like this in a round circle so you should Uh, understand the cycle and you should know we should particularly focus on the active catalyst okay then we have uh, so these were the uh, catalysts okay then what else then next what we have is mingo's rule mingo's rule now this is a very very important you can say a very very important topic to cover very very important we vip topic okay and the the very very important vvi whatever so this is the mingo's rule and uh, <clears throat> the reason i am telling you this is very important is because from the last 3 years continuously 8 marks questions have been coming from this mingo's rule so basically it is used to predict uh, this the structure for cluster compounds okay it is also used for uh, you know mechanisms so there was this question on uh, sandwich compounds where we had been given fe you know c6 h6 eta6 and eta5 c5 h5 so one was benzene and one was uh, pentadiene uh, cyclopentadiene and we were given that it undergoes reduction and what will be the uh, you know uh, product that will be formed so that is also predicted by mingo's rule so there are questions coming continuously from mingo's rule and you should definitely know the mingo's rule okay then cluster compounds this the question on cluster compounds has also been coming continuously uh, you know there was this question on bismuth 5 plus this year and there have been lot of other questions coming from cluster compounds every year okay and uh, with that you should also know boranes boranes is a, a, again a very important topic you should know what is nido arachno closo hypo and how to find out uh, you know if we add two electrons what is going to happen to the structure that is very important okay in boranes you should know the weight weights rule in boranes you should know the weights rule okay then you should also be uh, familiar with uh, weights rule is one thing and what else okay uh no spikes s t y x okay so this is again a kind of a rule spikes so you should be knowing weights rule spikes okay uh and what we are left with another very important topic that you need to do is term symbols okay term symbols you should be uh <coughs> proficient in this topic term symbols again a uh, Uh, a question is definitely going to come every sem- every uh, alternate uh, every si- 6 months from this topic term symbols you should be highly proficient in solving term symbols okay next topic what we have is lanthanides lanthanides again in every every year question from lanthanides and uh, you should basically know about the magnetic properties of lanthanides okay uh, again a question came this year for two marks from uh, lanthanides magnetic properties you should know there is i have actually also done a video on magnetic properties of lanthanides where i have discussed the you know the electronic configuration of lanthanides and how does it affect the mag- magnetic properties of lanthanides so that is very important secondly you should know how 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 to separate the lanthanides okay there is ion exchange method and uh, you know then this cation exchange an ion exchange you should you should know all about how to separate lanthanides so every alternate year there is a question on uh, separation of lanthanides so this was one important topic as well then again a very scoring topic but it's all purely mugging up and that's bio inorganic okay it's one of the simplest topics but there's lot of mugging up to do so this you should definitely do i recommend it i recommend it to uh, to do this topic very well but only at the end so you should do this at the end because this is pure mugging up you should do it at the end because you just need to remember stuff you do there's no mechanism or there's no concept involved in this topic and you should know all about metalloenzymes okay 
by what like you should know you know which metal is involved in metal enzymes basically you should know what all metals are there and what is the what is the you know um, role of metal enzymes what role do they play in our body then you should know about ferritins okay again you should know you know the oxidation state uh, on which the metal is present what is the color and what is the structure uh, so this is these are the various important things okay then ferritin uh, transferritin okay then hemoglobin myoglobin you should know that's definitely one of the questions that comes okay then vitamin b12 and then nitrogenase okay nitrogenase is important you should know about nitrogenase and uh, again the same things this the structure the metal involved and you know the oxidation state the color okay hemerythrin so you if you go through any good book even in hui it's all these things are given so you can just consult hui as well and i am sure if you are preparing for net you, you must be having notes for bio in organic chemistry and you can read through the notes as well or whatever suits you okay so this important this is an important topic and you can easily score 8 marks from this topic but you should do this at the end okay that's what i recommend because it's all mugging up and you should just you know remember it okay and uh, okay so this was bio and organic then we come on to vesper theory so there will be always a question from vesper theory and not simple question sometimes a simple question comes for two marks but generally uh, questions that are quite tough they come from vesper theory not tough but they are unusual like they'll ask the structure of i3 plus or i3 minus you know uh structures like these they can ask so you should know uh, how to find these structures and you should know the basic vesper theory right like what is the shape if there is four bond pairs two lone pairs what is the shape if there are three bond pairs two lone pairs uh and th- stuff like that okay then you should also know about bond order now how how to calculate bond order for various uh you know uh, uh various molecules like you should know for carbon monoxide so basically you should know mot for carbon monoxide you can say or hf you know hydrogen fluoride you, you should know the molecular orbital uh, theory molecule or you should know the basically the molecular orbital diagram for these compounds and the reason that i am telling you is they will ask you the bond order of you know some compound so you should know the molecular orbital diagram in order to predict the bond order then you should know also the bond order of compounds like n2 n2 plus you know n2 minus so they can ask you arrange them according to their bond order so you should know the molecular or- orbital diagram of nitrogen in order to predict the structures of these compounds okay so there are questions like these that can come they are rare every year question will come from vesper theory but these are uh, you know th- these can come in alternate years or they can ask you the bond strength which is a, which is the strongest bond among these three you know so indirectly they can ask you the bond order so every anything that you need to calculate for this uh, either the bond strength or the bond length you can directly find out from the bond order okay and uh, then there is uh, one topic that has some questions but that is a very vast topic and you actually do not know from where the question can come so if you have time then you go for p block now p block is a very very vast vast uh, you know field and that's why i am recommending it at the last so if you have if you're done with the course you have done with the revision you have practiced a lot of questions then go for p block in p block you can go for you know structures for various uh, phosphorus as phosphoric acids sulfurous acids you you should know the structure of p4 you know p4o10 you know st- uh, structures like these you should know the structure for these compounds so this is all pure mugging up and that's why i am telling you to do the p block at last because it's very vast they can directly give you any reaction you know they can ask you about inorganic borane or uh, sorry inorganic benzene or borazines there are a lot of things that they can ask you from p block so that's why it's a very vast topic you, there are also sili- you know silicon compounds you should know about you know various silicon compounds there that are there, there that you should know about you should know about silicates you know there are different type type of silicates 3d silicates you know uh, so you should all uh, you should know about these uh, silicon compounds as well so p block is quite vast so leave it till for the end and one thing that i forgot to add in this topic was uh, it was epr spectroscopy basically and mosbar 
so you should know mosbes spectroscopy or mosbas spectroscopy whichever you prefer to call it and basics of epr and mosbes spectroscopy so these are two spectroscopic techniques that are important there is nmr but nmr is quite easy and you do not need to particularly practice that but e- mosbar and epr you need to practice because there are a lot of be- lot of questions that have that have been coming recently from epr and mosbar so you should know this epr and mosbar as well so these are the all the major topics that are there in organic chemistry that you need to do well and you know you can easily score close to uh, 70 or marks i think yeah uh, if you can score about say uh, there are 10 questions in uh, part b okay around 10 to uh, not 10 they 13 questions right and say if you can answer eight of them you, if you do these topics you can answer eight of these questions so you get 16 marks from here and out of the 20 questions in part c that are from inorganic portion you can easily attempt close to i can say 12 if you do these topics or even 13 for that matter so 13 questions into 4 26 52 so you see you see you have done 68 marks of paper from inorganic chemistry itself and this is very modest marking that i am doing eight questions is okay but here you can score more than that also you can score close to 15 questions there is one more topic which has eight markers questions coming from that and that is in in inorganic portion and that is nuclear chemistry but nuclear chemistry is again a vast topic and they can give you questions from any place so you do, you do not need to do this topic because it is totally random there is no pattern they can give you any question there there are questions on calculate the cross section in barn in barn units you know there are very di- different kind of questions that come from nuclear chemistry all i can say is you should know what happens when there is alpha em- emission you know what kind of protons and electrons are abstracted or neutrons are lost and what happens in case of beta emission so you should know this this is a very basic it will hardly take you 5 minutes to understand so that this is all that i can recommend you in nuclear chemistry because it's totally random there's no pattern and hence it's very difficult to uh, you know predict what kind of question can come from uh, nuclear chemistry okay so now let's focus on how to you know prepare how to divide the time i will suggest is that the real preparation i'll tell you honestly starts from 1st of september that's when the real preparation starts for csi net 3 months is more than enough to crack csi net even get a very good draw rank you know even in top 50 if you want to score you can easily prepare for 3 months and do that from 1st september onwards you need to be very focused and i think you should if you are you know depending on your capabilities i cannot predict your capabilities anywhere from 5 to 8 hours daily is good enough okay uh, and uh, 1st september onwards till about 30 30th of november you prepare uh, the, these topics from inorganic physical organic focus on two two major portions do not focus on all three if you focus on all three you are never going to crack it okay i'll be very honest you have to focus on your major major strong points any question if, apart from your major points for example if your major point is physical and uh, inorganic and if any question qu- comes from organic and you can answer it that's a big bonus okay so but you have to put all your focus on only two major uh topics that is physical inorganic organic inorganic is a must for everybody we can choose between organic and physical which is a, whichever is your strong point so till 30th november you do your concepts okay and right now it's a, it's 5th of august okay today is 5th of august so uh i would say that till 5th of september you can do whatever you like you know if you like organic you like physical just you know do random topics the uh, you know uh, make a schedule how will you follow a schedule from 1st of september you know so t- till 1st of september you can be a bit relaxed but you should make up your mind that from 1st of september you need to practice a lot okay so from 1st september to 30th november you do all the topics complete all the topics you know do daily five or six questions or 10 questions whatever you can manage from that topic but once the december session starts and the paper comes the paper is written 15 days then you only need to practice questions only you know need to practice questions 
only practice questions previous year questions whatever type of questions you get from gate from net from uh, you know whatever ex entrance exams that are taking place whatever kind of questions you can find just practice questions because now you have done all the theory now it's very important to do these questions on uh, you know apply these questions and do the cons what happens is i have seen a lot of students who are very good with theory you know even better than me they know the theory very well but what happens is when once they go and give the exam uh, and if they haven't practiced enough questions they tend to uh, you know they tend to fumble kind of in the in the paper they do not know how to apply whatever they have read in the question or sometimes they find the question too difficult so sometimes practicing a lot of questions can actually make a question very easy because <clears throat> this is the way i have cracked the paper because i used to practice a lot of questions and that actually worked for me i didn't know theory that well at that point of time but yet i was able to do well in the paper and the reason reason for that is i was i have was practicing so many questions so i knew you know what are the what are the smart ways to do a question you know if you cannot find the answer if you do not know anything about the question you can still crack a question so these are some of the things that you you learn once you practice questions so i practiced questions for the last one month and that's all i did i didn't read any theory i didn't do any topics in particular i just practiced questions and whichever i didn't knew i used to read about them and go on to the next question so that's that was my strategy but i have seen that does not work with around 99% of the people so it's very important to find your strategy your strategy whatever suits you but if you are good with theory that's very very good but you need to practice questions and you you need to practice at least 15 days uh, you know you need to practice questions again i am stressing on it again and again just do this and i am pretty sure you will be able to do well in the exam